Hello students. This lecture is about Ruskin Bond story, Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright, which is there in your syllabus. Before we begin discussion on the story, I'd like to give you a brief introduction on the author, Ruskin Bond. Bond was born in 1934 in India, is actually an author of British descent. The Indian Council of Child Education recognized his pioneering role in the growth of children's literature in India and awarded him the Sahitya Academy Award in 1992. Bond is one such writer whose dominant theme is ecology and environment. He always emphasizes on the friendly relationship between humans and non-humans as both are interdependent. In his stories, he skillfully handles the issues of man's harmony with his environment, including animals. The story, Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright, is an attempt to analyze the conflicts faced by the humans and wild animals for their survival. While giving a graphic description of jungle and wildlife in the story, Bond not only brings man into a close relationship with animals, but also shows how sometimes people are being affected by wild creatures. As a rapidly growing human civilization is destroying nature and wild habitats, the story gives a human message of conserving nature and wildlife. It is a call for a harmonious coexistence of humans and wild creatures for the benefit of both. Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright is an interesting story about the future of wildlife in India. It describes a sturdy old tiger that lives near a village in the foothills of the Himalayas. The villagers and the tiger respect each other's territory. Bond mentions how towns and farming have been begun around the river banks by clearing the forest, leading to the rapid disappearance of the population of wild animals. Poachers and hunters kill lions, tigers, and leopards to display their fur and skin at their homes as well as to make money by selling those in the market. The hero of this story is the senile tiger, which is the only one left in the forest while all other tigers have been hunted down. Bond magnificently evokes the pain of the lonely tiger. The tiger does not go to the river bank for drinking water as it is open land and therefore he can be killed easily. So he goes up to a lake inside the jungle, but that too is shrinking fast. The villagers come to the lake with their cows and buffaloes, but the tiger does not mind their presence. Neither he attacks their cattle. The tiger has gained great experience in sensing man and his intentions, thus he knows how to remain out of their sight. The tiger comes fully alive in the detailed sympathetic description in the story. Although he is old, he has lost none of his majesty. He is represented with full understanding and kindness from the viewpoint of the little village boy, Ramu. Once Ramu is saved from being attacked by a mother bear by the timely appearance of the tiger at the spot, which drives the mother bear away. Thus, the tiger rescues Ramu and saves his life. Later, when the tiger's life is in danger due to the arrival of the hunters, Ramu does his best to save the tiger by giving him clues and hints about the hunter's presence in the jungle. This unknown bond between Ramu and tiger represents a sacred bond of mutual trust and dependence between man and beast in the world of nature. When everything goes dry due to the late arrival of the monsoon rains and due to the breaking out of the fire in the forest, the tiger remains hungry for quite some time due to the lack of creatures it feeds upon. And then it preys on the domestic buffaloes of the villagers in a desperate bid to survive. The panicked villagers fear that the tiger would kill them too to satisfy its hunger and they get ready to catch and kill it. The villagers cleverly trap the tiger but are able to slightly wound it. They shoot the tiger at his limb which makes him fall in the river and get washed away. As the tiger falls in the river and floats to the opposite bank, he seeks refuge in a new, safe and wild habitat. The villagers feel sorry for the tiger's absence as he is a dignified creature who offers protection to the green forest from those who cut off trees and destroys wild environment. 
as Ramu remarks, the tiger is the very soul of India, and when the tiger is gone, so will the soul of the country. Indeed, the beast in the story symbolizes not only nobility, but the very soul of India. The loss of the last tiger creates a sense of void in the lives of the villagers. The tiger had gone, it was as though the protector had gone, leaving the forest open and vulnerable. The story, however, has a happy ending, with Ruskin Bond confirming the continuation of wildlife in wilderness. In the new jungle, the roar of the tiger is answered by similar roars from other tigers, which affirms at the end that the tiger has found a safe and congenial sanctuary for himself, where he can mate with the females and bring on the next generation of tigers. The title of the story echoes the first line of the English poet William Blake's poem, The Tiger. In this poem, the 18th century British poet William Blake depicted the tiger as a wonderfully fascinating creation by God, a supreme creation that combines beauty with danger, power with awe. Bond's tiger in this story seems to embody the very description of Blake's tiger. Today, Ecology is defined as a way in which plants, animals, and people are related to each other and their environment. In this relationship, they are so much interdependent on each other that any disturbance in one disturbs the other. With every change in the civilization, the relationship between animals and humans have also changed, and often the effect of the changes has been so acute that sometimes it has wiped the whole civilization from the face of earth. Ruskin Bond's story, Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright, addresses this very concern for ecology, appealing people to replenish those diminishing factors of ecology which threaten the survival of mankind the most.